This lesson is on measures of variation. Variation refers to the spread of values in a set of data. And one term you'll need to be familiar with for this lesson is range, and that's the difference between the greatest and the least numbers in the set. What you see on your screen right now is called a box and whiskers plot. This portion being the box, and these two lines being the whiskers. Box and whiskers plots are good for pieces of data of more than 25. Under 25, you'll have a couple problems like that, but really this type of um, graphing shines when you're having more than 25 pieces of data. But honestly, beyond a state test, I've never seen this used. I saw it used for results of a test in Ohio once, but as an adult, I've never seen this. And um, it's just one of those things you have to learn. Now, there's a couple numbers represented with any box and whiskers. This portion down here is referred to as the lower quartile, or abbreviated LQ. This up here represents the upper quartile, abbreviated UQ. And this abbreviation IQR is for interquartile range. Now, each of these sections, this section here, this section here, and this section, and this section represents 25% of the data. So this section here, this whisker represents 25%. This small portion of the box, although it's small, still represents 25% of the data. This one represents 25%, and this larger whisker here represents 25% of the data. So let's take a look at an example of how we could construct one of these. We have eight pieces of data here, and the first thing we need to do is get them in numerical order. In order to do that, I'm going to use a line plot. Um, I could just go and start, say 0 is my lowest number, 19 is my highest number, and then write them in order. Um, and that works fine when you only have eight pieces of data, but when you're looking at larger pieces of data, let's say 20, 25, it's really simple to forget a number. So I find a line plot is a very easy and efficient way to uh, order your numbers. And here we have all our numbers plotted out on a line plot. Next step is to write these numbers in numerical order. However, when I do this, I'm going to actually put it in two rows instead of just a uh, typical one. The reason why I do two rows instead of one is for convenience. Now I have this set of data split into two even sections. As a result, it's very easy to find the median. The median is going to be the mean of the last data point in the first row and the first data point in the second row. So for this particular problem, it's very simple. The mean of 3 and 5 is 4. Another reason why I like this setting up this way is now I have to find my lower quartile and upper quartile. And that is just a matter of drawing a line straight down in between these sets of data. By doing that, I've effectively quartered my uh, pieces of data. So now I have quartiles. So here's my quartile. This is going to be the uh, quartile for part of the box, the other part of the box and then the upper quartile. And you'll see how that uh, is constructed in just a moment. But first I have to find my lower quartile and my upper quartile. And by doing this line, it's going to be really simple. My lower quartile is going to be the mean of this number and this number, which will be 2. And the upper quartile is just the mean of this number and this number. And for this particular problem, it's going to be 8.5. So here's my data plotted out on a box and whiskers plot. And this will be the information your textbook will be asking you to input. So the range is nothing more than 19 minus 0, of course 19. Inner quartile range is the difference between the upper quartile and lower quartile, so that's 6.5. And then the median, although not written here, is 4. 
Now, one other piece of information you need, may need to find out are outliers. Outliers are any data points greater than or less than one and a half times the interquartile range from the quartile. So let's take a look at our example and see what that means. We're going to multiply the interquartile range here by 1.5. Why 1.5? Honestly, I have no idea. But that's what we're supposed to do, so that's what we're going to do. And when you multiply the interquartile range by 1.5, we get 9.75. Now we're going to take that number, and what you typically do is subtract this number from the lower quartile, but it doesn't look like we have an outlier there, so I'm not going to bother with that. Instead, I'll go ahead and add that number to our upper quartile. And when I do, I get a number 18.25. That means any number greater than 18.25 is an outlier. So for this particular problem, 19 is an outlier. Essentially that what that means is a lot of our data is down here. 19 is just kind of um, black sheep of the family, so to speak. It doesn't, I mean, it's there, we have to represent it, but it doesn't really represent um, something that we would typically see with our data points. All right, I want to do just one more example here. This time, instead of having an even set of data, I have an odd set of data. I have nine pieces of data here. I went ahead and made two rows and put them in numerical order. And notice my fifth piece of data is kind of hanging off the end here. And there's a reason for that. That is my median. That's why I like doing two rows, because it helps solve some of the problems far easier than it would if you kept all the numbers in numerical order in one row. Next thing we need to do is create a line dividing our two pieces of the remaining data left. And when we do that, we'll be able to find the upper and lower quartiles. Lower quartile just be the median of, or I'm sorry, the mean of these two numbers, which will be 145.5. Do not round this, keep it that way. And the upper quartile will be the mean of these two numbers, which will be 187. So the textbook stuff, things that are going to ask you, range here will be 63. 198 minus 135 is 63. Upper quartile, we already have that as 187. Lower quartile, 145.5. Inner quartile range, that's 187 minus the 145.5. It's going to give us 41.5. And the median, we already have right here, 166. I'm not going to look for an outlier on this one because there's no number screaming that it's really far off the other one. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm pretty sure that, or pretty confident that there is no outlier. So when you get that sense, you're probably in pretty good shape not to find one. Uh, it's just when there's a really low number or really high number that you do want to check for it.